Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can use the Crane plugin, a really fast and easy way to define a mesh, uh, which I'm going to explain in this tutorial, uh, define the mountain and valleys, and finally use the Crane Solver uh, to just fold this origami pattern. So if I just hold on this folding, you can see that I can fold this mesh and get the final results. So be sure to watch the video till the end because I want to show you step by step a really easy way to use the Crane plugin. Uh, first of all, let me explain what we need to get the final results. If you go to the Crane uh, plugin menu, uh, you can also install it by going to File, Special Folder, and in the Components folder, you can put the Crane plugin here and restart your Rhino Grasshopper, uh, you will get this C menu here, Crane, okay? Uh, first of all, what we need here is a mesh, the base mesh, which is going to be this one. For this tutorial, I have selected this mesh, which is really easy to understand because it's a series of triangles. Uh, by defining the mountain and valleys, we can get a really cool uh, folding pattern, which I just showed you. You can just watch it here which is really great. I think this can also be uh, useful if you want to uh, use that in your projects for, uh, for example, maybe a parametric pavilion, something like that, okay? So the first step is to define a mesh, which is, this is really the most important part. What we have to do is to define a mesh. The next part is to define, uh, define the mountain uh, crease lines and the valley crease lines, okay? which you can see here in this pattern, it's really easy. Uh, these diamonds are the mountains and uh, the horizontal lines are the valleys, okay? Uh, which I'm going to make that in Rhino because I don't want to make this parametric. Uh, actually, uh, we can make this completely parametric, but it's going to be uh, more complicated and you don't understand the basic of the Crane plugin because I really want to show you how easy it is to use the Crane to make an origami. Okay, uh, so first of all, let's just start from scratch. I'm going to delete everything and start with explaining the Crane uh, Solver. So if you go to the Crane plugin, uh, you can see here that we have the Crane Solver. Obviously, this is the most important tool we need here. And uh, when we give the inputs, there is also a C mesh or a Crane mesh. Uh, I usually use this Crane mesh preview uh, which I connect to here to see the final results, okay? That is the first thing I want to explain. The next thing is always remember that when you want to start the solver, uh, you have to put these uh, three solver, rigid mode, and quad flats to on, okay? Uh, if you don't put these on, it's not going to work, so remember that you just have to uh, put these three inputs to on, and then we can use this fold, unfold, and reset to do this. So. Uh, the most important part is these three inputs to be on. The next part is this one to fold, this one to unfold, and uh, this one to reset. That's all we need here, okay? For the input, there is a C mesh, which I'm going to explain now. There is also a constraint. Uh, maybe in the future tutorial, I'm going to explain, well, uh, maybe we want to just and make a series of points on the ground. So it's really cool. You can put it on a plane, glue those points together. That is really great. But for now, we don't want to focus on this one. We just want to make a C mesh and get the final result, okay? That's the easiest way to get an origami simulation in Grasshopper. Uh, to get started, I just want to show you a simple pattern here, okay? Uh, as you seen here, uh, what we had here was a rectangle, okay? And if I just use this mid edge to draw this, okay? Always remember that you have to have uh, exploded lines, not connected, that is really important and it's going to give you the final result. For example, these uh, two lines, it's better to explode them. So this one, so they are all, all uh, separate lines. Okay, uh, for example, this one, I just want to fold this simple pattern. So what should I do? First of all, bring all the lines into a params curve component, 
we can just set multiple curves, bring it, bring them all in, and we will have the lines. This is helpful because uh, I'm going to give you a trick to convert that into a mesh. How can we convert these into a mesh? It's really easy. Uh, first, go to the surface. I usually use this uh, primitive bounding box tool. And let's just see all the names. Give all the lines to the content. And as you can see, we have uh, different boxes for each of these lines, which is not really what we need, okay? What we need here is to right click and use this union box. So the first step is to give a bounding box and put it into union box. So it's a single flat box for all of those lines. So we get a complete flat box or one box for all of those lines, okay? So why am I doing this? Because if you go to the intersect menu here in the physical, there is a tool called surface split. And I like to split this box with these lines. Okay. And you can see that we will get those fragments. So if I bake that, I will have all of these uh, fragments here. After doing this, the next step is to join them all together. So I'm going to go to the surface and use this brep join. The reason I'm doing these steps is that I want to convert that into a simple mesh. And by joining them together, it's going to be again one uh, complete uh, NURBS surface, right? And because this is a joint surface, when we convert that into a mesh, it's easily going to convert into uh, exactly the mesh we need. So remember you have all the lines, uh, you make a bounding box from them, uh, then you split it, then you join it, and after you do that, you have to go to the mesh, and in the utility, I'm going to use this simple mesh tool. The simple mesh is actually a great tool if you want to convert a series of triangles or uh, rectangles into a mesh. So that is going to also give you a mesh here. And the last step is, if you look at this mesh, this is like 18 and uh, 18 vertices and six faces. Again, we have to simplify that even further. Uh, I usually like to do that by going to utility and use this weld mesh. So let me give you a step by step. Uh, you have to give this to the mesh. And if I go to here, you can see the mesh, which is like 18 vertices and six faces converted into seven vertices and six faces. This is the minimum and the best mesh we need for the crane plugin. So let's just take a look at the steps we have to take. Uh, the first one is the lines. Uh, we have to make a bounding box, a union box from that, split them into segments, join them together. So it's one B rep, make it a simple mesh and then weld it into a really uh, great uh, actually a mini, uh, mini mesh we need for crane. Okay, let's just turn everything off and we are good to go. After having that mesh, uh, the best tool you can use to make a C mesh, which is the crane mesh, is in the inputs. I really don't use other tools. Uh, I only use this uh, C mesh MV lines. Okay, so I just go here and use this one. And there are three inputs really easy to use a mesh, mountain, and valley or crease lines. Sometimes in some of the projects, if I want to fix the folding and there are some problems, I'm going to use this C mesh MVT lines, which is exactly at the same, but there is also a triangular the crease lines, extra lines. But for the future, maybe I'm going to explain that. For now, to make it as simple as possible, we have to make and give the base mesh, the simplified mesh into the mesh. Input. The next step is to define the mountain and valley lines. So I'm just going to go to the Parms menu, pick up a curve, and set multiple curves for the mountains. It's really easy. I have to pick these here and give it to the mountain. And also another one for the valley. So I'm going to set multiple curves and give that. Here there is a problem. This line has to be split at the intersection of these lines. So again, I'm going to put split, split it here and that is better. So let's just fix that again from the start, set multiple curves. And that's going to give us the base mesh we needed. That's okay. 
uh, the mountains is okay and now we have the valleys so I'm going to set multiple of these curves give it to here and now we have the C mesh which we can use in our project okay uh, for the fault speed you can give it a number I'm going to maybe put that 0.25 percent you can increase or decrease that later and now we just have to put all of these on reset and start to fold let's just turn this off turn everything off and now you can see how easy it is to fold the mesh this is really cool uh, you can also from the crane a uh, plugin uh, go to the uh, previews and uh, use other tools maybe you just want to deconstruct the C mesh which is really useful if you want to extract the mesh we can bake that and get the mesh here uh, you can get the mountain and valleys again if you want to uh, make that into colors I can go to the preview give it a custom preview here a swatch turn this off I usually do that and reset this is the best combination uh, you'll get the final result so if I just fold that if I go to the rendered mode it's even better and you can see how easy it is to get the final results okay uh, now I'm just going to make a copy maybe I want this pattern okay we have to get rid of some of the extra lines here for example this one uh, because it's only horizontal lines here okay just making this as simple as possible so you can see that you can make those patterns easily if we want to delete the duplicates we can go to the edit uh, select objects duplicates and delete okay and now we're good to go so remember that we have to give all of those segment lines into the curve and we can check that out by baking the weld mesh result that's the mesh you can see it's completely okay uh, we have to give the mountain and the valleys so I'm going to just set multiple curves here and remember that these are the mountains for this example file you can just select these lines these are the mountains and these are the valleys it's really easy to select and we are good to go just turn everything off turn off and now what we have to do is to just put all of these things again on reset and start to fault give that the color turn this off remember to turn this off if you want to see the blue and the red lines again uh, let's just decrease the speed and you can see how easy it is to make the pattern fault and you can see how easy it is to make that pattern fold and get the final results uh, this is how you can use the crane solver to make an origami grasshopper it's really easy uh, i hope this tutorial was useful if you have any questions just let us know uh, thanks for watching and see you next time bye